Hello. Hi. Okay. We're on. Hello. Uh, thank you. Oh, now we're on. Okay. There it is. Hello. Uh, good morning. Welcome to all. Uh, it's so, so good to have you here on this uh, sacred and blessed day for uh, rest and regeneration. Uh, I'm going to invite everyone to join me in a moment of centering and stillness as we enter into this uh, morning of worship. So everyone please close your eyes, feel your feet on the ground, and take a deep breath in. Hold it and let it go. Nice and slow. Breath in. And at your own pace, out slow. And once more in. And out. And then at your own pace, open your eyes and return. Thank you. joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known i'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever
The worship today will be led by ESG's Grow Team. We light this candle to remember the light and warmth of God's love. Let us worship God. Reflect on nature, a masterpiece God has created. Remember a time when you were carefree and at peace with yourself. Take a moment to appreciate all the wonderful people and things you have in your life. Recall the time when your spirituality gave you sustenance or purpose during a draining or overwhelming time. Seek acceptance for the best and worst parts of your life. We invite you to place a hand over your heart and greet your neighbors. O oh God, the only source of life and energy and wealth, defend our planet Earth. Teach us to converse and not to squander the riches of nature, to use a right the heritage of former generations, and to plan for the welfare of our children's children. Renew our wonder, awaken our concern, and make us better stewards and more careful tenants of the world you lend us as our home. 
Hear us, O God, our creator and redeemer. In the name of Christ, amen. I see the love of God in every ocean, reaching further than I can see. I see the love of God in every valley, offering shelter to you and me. I see the love of God in every mountain, standing fast through eternity. The love of God is all around me, whatever the trouble, pain, or care. The love of God is all I would look, I find it there. I see the love of God in eyes of old folk, kindly wisdom shining clear. I see the love of God in little babies sleeping softly. I see the love of God in every river, flowing wide, flowing free. I see the love of God in every ocean, reaching further than I can see, reaching further That's great. Uh, today, our scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than its clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass, clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the faithless run after these things, and our Heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well.
All right. There. Uh, so, as was uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we are the uh, GROW team at Eglinton St. George's. Uh, we are responsible for the maintenance of the garden in part. Uh, we interface with all of the plot renters and anyone who happens to be around the church uh, in the summer months. Um, it's uh, typically a team of four of us, uh, myself, Michaela, and Madison. Uh, we also have a fourth with us uh, named uh, Sebastian. He's not able to be here today, but he did write a reflection, so I'm going to uh, share it on his behalf. Um, so, please enjoy. I'm actually gonna stand a bit back here just so I can move between the pages. This is smarter. In Matthew 6, Jesus asks us to reflect on our lives and to consider in what it is that we place the most value and what it is through which we seek purpose. He asks, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? In a world of technology and of cycling trends, it is increasingly easy to get sucked into the latest material want of the newest or the trendiest version, remaining in this way of thinking where all to life is food and to the body is clothes can leave us feeling incomplete. As there is clearly much to life we are missing more than this. We are reminded of the flowers that grow, as Jesus says, and of the grass of the field. They lack the notion of clothes as we understand it, and yet they are beautiful. Grass only lives until the winter time, yet we water it and care for it in the summer all the same. The flowers and the grass each teach us to search for a purpose outside of what can give us momentary joy, and instead to search for something that leaves us feeling complete, something that sustains us and connects us with others. In my short time with the GROW team so far, Sebastian says, I am learning about myself and where I am finding purpose to be in this world. The GROW team recently organized and carried out a very successful food drive. Uh, being able to witness how hard our, our work uh, combined, our, how our hard work combined with the generosity of others to generate that food goes to to those in need, and it's a process that left me feeling inspired. The experience with the GROW team's successful food drive also helped me in seeking a purpose beyond material possessions. I have learned to what extent we can find fulfillment and joy from acts of compassion and service towards others. Aside from the food drive, one of the daily tasks of the GROW team is to water the many plants of the church, church's property. When interacting with these plants so frequently, we are given the opportunity to observe the plant as it grows and as it lives. We watch as the flowers bloom, as the petals fall, as the fruit becomes ready for harvest. There is a beauty to be found in this cycle. Human beings themselves are a part of nature as well. So we must also follow a cycle such as the flowers and the grass do. That must mean that there is beauty in humans as well, which cannot be altered by how we craft our appearances. That is another lesson that I am learning since starting my time with the GROW team. In conclusion, let us listen to the words of Jesus as he asks us what more there is to life than food, and what more there is to the body than clothes. Let us all search for our own purpose and seek the lessons that can be learned from what we can do for others and from the creation that God has provided us. Um, Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 33, highlights the importance of finding acceptance, purpose, and faith in our lives. This Bible verse teaches people that by trusting in God, we can feel at peace with what we have. Just like the beauty of nature, each individual is perfect. 
The passage reveals the message that as humans, we are all valuable and equal in the eyes of God, regardless of more superficial concerns that seem to be becoming a larger focus of people's self-worth. As the United Church of Canada, we value these themes of acceptance, purpose, and faith, and use these beliefs to improve the lives of those around us. Acceptance is among the most significant themes expressed in this passage and is an important value of the United Church. Acceptance refers to the ability to embrace a, embrace a situation without attempting to change it. Acceptance is encouraged through the quote, and why do you worry about clothes? See the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. This quote is comparing us to flowers. As humans, we can become obsessed with superficial needs and wants, such as physical appearance, material possessions, or societal status. However, if we take a step back, we can realize that we are just like flowers, a perfect part of nature. Just like nature is not trying to conform or change how it looks through laboring or spinning, people do not feel, need to feel obligated to do so. Finding acceptance is particularly pertinent as a 16-year-old female who is constantly surrounded by messages of not being good enough. I am working on finding acceptance and knowing that in God's eyes, everyone is beautiful. Feeling at peace and beautiful in your own skin will allow you to feel more happy and enjoy life. Reaching a state of acceptance can be found by focusing on what we are grateful for, which is often overlooked. The second important theme that I interpreted from the Bible passage was finding purpose. It is important to find purpose in your life in order to feel peace and contentment. I try to find purpose by having a more outward perspective through helping others and giving back to the community. As a part of the ESG Grow team, we find purpose in giving back to the community. Um, through volunteer work, community workshops, and shared community gardens. Recently, the Grow team participated in a food drive, which helps to keep the Little Free Pantry stocked to provide community members with resources and support. The final theme that was prevalent in this chosen passage was faith. The quote from the Bible states, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You have little faith. This refers to having faith that God is there for us and will support us. Faith can, come, can help us overcome and persevere through times of uncertainty. Personally, during times of hardship, I feel comfort knowing that God is with me and has a plan for me. The main themes I extracted from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 33 were self-love, spiritual nourishment, and finding purpose. The scripture challenges us to find acceptance and contentment within ourselves, reflect on the definition of beauty, and question our superficial desires. As a member of the ESG Grow staff, I have found several answers to these ambiguities in the garden and community. First, the line, isn't the body more than clothes, particularly stands out to me. It encourages us to find purpose in our lives beyond our achievements and value ourselves for more than our possessions. From my time working as part of the GROW staff, I have learned that nature and gardening can help us connect with God and find the beauty in everything. For example, I have discovered many disfigured plants, strange flowers, and unusual insects while working in the garden. However, they were all beautiful in a raw and natural way. Additionally, I have learned that there is no single definition of beauty. While hydrangeas and bee balm are not similar, they are both beautiful nonetheless. This teaches us a very valuable lesson, not to compare ourselves to others. After all, does a flower become less beautiful when seen next to another species? If we can accept these imperfections in nature and even label them as beautiful, why can we not do the same to ourselves and fellow humans? We are also creations of God, a part of nature. Furthermore, the line, isn't life more than food, suggests that we need more than food to sustain us and thrive. For instance, Christians receive nourishment through spirituality and a relationship with God. We may be able to survive with just food and water, but to truly thrive, we must also feed our souls. A relationship with God can give us purpose and fulfillment, or bring us comfort and peace. A similar reality is true for plants. 
Plants need light, air, water, nutrients, and space to survive. However, plants have been shown to grow quicker while listening to music or positive affirmations. Lastly, the line, see how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these, stands out to me as well. The passage suggests that we do not need to labor or spin to have purpose um, or to have worth. We can find contentment and value in our simple existence, just like nature. A flower does not need to prove its worth, and neither do we. We are enough as we are, and we must remember that God designed each and every one of us. To conclude, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 33, emphasizes the beauty and depth of our existence. We are challenged to find an appreciation and love for ourselves beyond our external appearance. We are taught that God sees us for who we are inside, and we do not need to worry about meeting society's definition of beauty. We are also encouraged to deepen our relationship with God and find purpose through our faith. The environment in general, and ESG's garden in particular, um, in particular, exemplify these themes and can be used to guide our actions. As well, I challenge you to find beauty in your, imperceived, your perceived imperfections the way you find beauty in nature's quirks. Nothing about you is a mistake. Hello, everyone. Again, I'll be the final speaker for uh, today's reflection period. So, as we've all considered the meaning of Jesus' teaching from Matthew chapter 6, our team, our grow team, discussed the importance of, of nourishment in our, in our lives and in its various forms uh, as personal emotional sustenance, uh, as the life-giving force for plant growth, and so on and so on. And in our discussions with each other, the question of self-esteem and self-acceptance, no doubt you heard in the last couple of reflections, seemed to emerge uh, very naturally again and again. And in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, there, is a, there is a lot there to be uh, learned about what Jesus has to say of these things. Matthew, in particular, uh, among scholars is known to be the one that tries to show Jesus as the most distinctively Jewish Messiah of the four accounts we have. And to kind of show that point, the writer of Matthew opens with a genealogy in the first chapter, which begins with Abraham and is traced through the lineage of King David, eventually to Jesus. However, the evangelist also cites uh, Jacob, as part of the Christic genealogy. Uh, Jacob, who in the book of Genesis uh, wrestled with an angel and earned the name Israel, which means he who wrestles with God. And just as the primeval history describes, it is our human nature, I would say, to struggle with God. We wrestle and we question to no end. And, and in this struggle, this constitutive doubt, we also question our own worth as individuals. We, at times, grasp for an unrealistic standard of perfection in our work, in our social affairs, and sometimes also in our physical appearances. Sometimes, these barriers between us and the divine are superficial and materialistic. You know, I am not perfect because I'm not wearing Chanel or a Rolex. And Jesus responds to this, isn't the body more than clothes? Other times, these barriers are more existential. Why am I here? Why did I survive? And Jesus replies, isn't life more than food? In each case, we struggle. And Jesus not always consoles us with answers but instead with further questions. And I admit, uh, as my first summer as part of the GROW team, I am inundated with questions on a daily basis, questions about the logistics of the job and questions about the best way to maintain the garden. And wouldn't you know it, but 
five weeks into this thing, I still don't get it. I don't fully understand the complex ecosystem of this garden. I just kind of am grasping at straws, and I mostly defer to Sophia, uh, our in-house botanist on these things. Uh, thank, thank goodness for her. Um, but uh, truly, the scale of plant life and its interworkings leave me in a state of awe, I would say. Uh, even the tip of the iceberg that we have here, the few native plants alongside tomatoes and cucumbers and parsley and the like, uh, uh, underscores my lack of comprehension. Uh, even this relatively limited scope of plants seems to be working along the lines of some kind of elective affinities and synergies that elude me entirely. Uh, and despite it, it, it all carries on without me. The native plants, uh, in particular, are amazing in this regard. A couple of weeks ago, we dug up a Joe pie weed and just left it on the sidewalk for a few hours. Not great. Uh, then eventually wheeled it around to Craighurst, uh, planted it, and it bounced back uh, just in a couple of hours. And also the soil was like really dry and hard, but it bounced back. Uh, native plants are amazing that way, I suppose. So, you know, there's a way in nature. There are intelligences uh, which are non-human, but without which there would be no human intelligence or human survival. We depend on it. And indeed, the limit of our knowledge of ourselves and each other is not something to be anxious of. Jesus asks, can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? I feel like I should put that on my wall somewhere. And uh, as a team, you know, we don't always see eye to eye. That's the nature of you know, these relationships, and sometimes there's miscommunication. But I think these differences ought to be embraced. For within otherness, there is the possibility of change and evolution. And so I take pride in the ability to make a team, not as a monolith, but a team itself, a garden of diversity and interlocking dynamism. I apologize, that's also me. Uh, I lost track of the hymn count. So this week's uh, offerings and announcements, as always, we encourage everyone to uh, donate if you're able to. Uh, you can give a monthly donation by pre-authorized uh, remittance, uh, or you can give online. Uh, you can follow the link up there. It's esgunited.org slash give. Anything is always appreciated and goes to further the work of the church. And we're grateful for all of it. Uh, announcements. So, we have a few. Uh, first of all, uh, ESG is accepting new participants for our remote community garden program, which is partially what you heard about today. Um, this is an extension, a new extension of the community garden program in which people have uh, uh, their own plots at their home, in the front lawn, or wherever they might be able to put it. And uh, they're also included in all of the workshops and events that we're putting on for the benefit of plot renters. So uh, if you want to join, the uh, invitation is completely open. Uh, drop us a line, email us, talk to us in the front foyer if you might be interested or if someone you know would be. Uh, we'd love to help you along that. Uh, next, there is a new episode of The Rooster Crows, which is the podcast uh, that uh, Reverend Stephen Milton uh, hosts uh, at Lawrence Community Park, or Community Church. Uh, and the new episode is called Stay Out, Canada is Locking Out Refugees, uh, about sort of our uh, immigration and refugee policy in recent years. You can listen to it wherever you get uh, your podcasts. 
and I think it should be up now. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Reverend Stephen Milton, who I just talked about, he is on vacation, uh, and he returns on August the 1st, and if you need anything uh, from him at all, uh, please contact uh, his substitute, which is Reverend Dr. Eric Bacon at uh, eric at lawrenceparkchurch.ca. Again, from Lawrence uh, Community Church, Lawrence Park Community Church. They are also doing a reading group about the book of Job, one of my favorite books in the Bible. I'm actually part of this, so I'm looking forward. Uh, to meeting on Wednesday, August the 2nd at 7.30 p.m., where we'll be discussing uh, the passages that we've read up to now. Um, I believe that if you drop someone at the church a line, we'll figure it out, uh, you can be added to the email list where you get a couple of verses every day. And some illustrations by William Blake that are great. Uh, next, uh, the church services after today, I believe, or wait, hold on, no, not today, next week, yeah, uh, in August, uh, every Sunday we're going to be having them, 10.30 a.m. as usual, but it's going to be at Lawrence Park Community Church, uh, and that's going to be going through the month of August, as well for the first Sunday in September, the 3rd. Yeah. And lastly, this is my thing, uh, this is the Plot Renters Potluck. Uh, that the GROW team is putting on. It's on Tuesday. It's between 5 and 7. Uh, you're encouraged to bring a dish, but you're not required to. Uh, we're going to have food and drink, and if we can get it together, some games as well. Uh, we're going to be making the entrees, so if you do bring something, you can just bring like a side or a dessert. That'd be fine. Um, so yeah, we'd love to see you there. And that concludes our announcements, I believe. Dear God, we thank you for watching over us with eternal love, support, and forgiveness. We ask you to guide us as we navigate life in times of hardship, doing our best to seek and spread joy, love, and compassion. Please help us, please help bring good health to our community, aid our relationships, and protect us from danger and violence around us. As a community, we ask you to help individuals who are in need of support including minorities who act, face acts of discrimination, injustice, and violence. Please guide us through our environmental actions as we combat the, th the threat of climate change. Please support families during this time of unaffordable living. Please protect us from such illnesses and health issues like COVID-19. Please protect us from violence. And please watch over individuals who are living amidst the wildfires. Amen.
Go forth into your week and remember these lessons. Go and find beauty in yourself and others. Go and find purpose and nourishment in your faith. And know that God goes with you. God. 